All right, guys, we've made it. We have made it to my favorite video of the year, which is the new year bullet journal setup. I'm gonna be setting up my 2022 bullet journal in this Stology.grid notebook. And because this video is gonna be a long one, I would recommend before we dive in, if you wanna know why I got this notebook, as well as what kind of planning and prep work I did in order to get into the setup that I'm gonna be showing you today, make sure to check out my 2022 migration planning video so you can see all that stuff because I feel like we're gonna have enough to talk about with this setup. So I'll leave all of those details in a separate video for you to reference if you want to, which means that today we can just focus on this new bullet journal. So for this front cover page, because this is kind of an attached page, I'm not gonna do too much on this, but I just wanna have something on here that says 2022. And I also wanna add a touch of decoration. And the way I like to do that is through stamping. I picked up these stamps from this brand right here, which is called, I believe, Nula Bird. And she makes these absolutely beautiful handmade rubber stamps. And I'm gonna be using this one on the front cover here just to add a touch of decoration. So for all of the alphabet stamping and letter stamping, as well as this, which is my swallow on the front cover, I'm gonna be going in and using this ink right here. This is Versa Magic in Jumbo Java. This is a chalk ink. And I did some testing on the Stalogy paper before I went in with this ink. And I just found that the Versa Magic magic <laughs> the versa magic inks work the best for this kind of stuff i tried the memento inks and they actually bled through this paper pretty badly which was kind of a bummer oh beautiful oh i love that anyway <laughs> this year guys and i'll tell you this as i'm stamping 2022 right under my bird here this year I've decided that I am over using black pen in my journal. <laughs> and instead I really want to use brown because I just find it more warm. It's, I guess, nicer on the eyes. And yeah, I don't really know, but I decided I really want to use brown in my journal this year. So that is what we are going to do. I'm going to be using Jumbo Java for all of the ink and stamping on these spreads. And then if you see this pen up here, that is the Zebra Sarasa Grand in, what is it in? Oh wow, that came out really nice. Ha ha ha. In um, brown gray. And that is going to be my pen of choice for most of the year. And as I say that, here is a close up of my cover page. And now we are gonna be getting into the main part of my journal setup, which is going to begin with the index page. So usually in bullet journaling, an index is one of the kind of core spreads of the system and it is essentially a place where you are able to write down the spreads you make and the page numbers associated so that you can have a place of reference for all the spreads you make, which essentially makes it easier to find them. And I'm gonna be doing something similar. The only difference is that I won't be adding page numbers to my index because my notebook doesn't have page numbers and I don't really want to go through and add them all. So instead, what I'm gonna be doing is just writing the spreads that I do create. I won't have a page number associated with it, but I still wanted to create an index because I wanna have that kind of at a glance view of all the spreads that I do have in this journal in case I wanna look back on it later. So I'm gonna leave this page blank for now and I'm just gonna go ahead after this setup is done and write down all of the pages I made today 
This is also a good opportunity to show you guys how my headers are going to look in this setup. This is kind of the way I like to make all the headers for most of my spreads. I just do some stamping at the top with the name of the spread and then two horizontal lines with pencil. I really like pencil because it makes cleaning up mistakes a lot easier and I just find that a lot more relaxing and less stressful and this is going to be kind of the heading style you'll be seeing throughout the video. setting up my future log. This is another one of those core bullet journal spreads and this essentially acts as a place to record future dates throughout the year or in whatever time span you're using your bullet journal for. Similarly to the index, I'm going to be making a slight adjustment just so it works a bit better for me. And instead of recording future dates in this guy, I'm going to use this space to record the monthly highlights and big things that happen during the year. The reason why I'm doing this is because I actually use a Google calendar or a digital calendar for any type of scheduling or kind of future planning already. And that's something that I introduced this year and have found works really, really well for me. So because of that, I don't really need two places to record future events, but I still wanted to use this spread. And it was actually my friend Eve at Academic Eve who recommended I do this. So. This year, I'm gonna try out using this as an area to write down all those cool highlights and memorable dates. Last thing I'm gonna do here is I want to go in and add one more stamp just in the corner here. So I'm gonna be using this guy. This is a Eon Charm stamp, which you can see right here. And I'm gonna use the Versamagic Ink and Wheat. And I'm just gonna clean this because I haven't used this stamp before with my eraser. And I'm gonna go in and I am going to stamp this right about here. There we go. So we have a nice little candle going on down there. It's pretty small, but I don't wanna take away a lot of space from my September kind of spread going on here. So we're keeping her into the corner. But before I turn to the next page, I'm also just gonna take a brass tab. These are from Midori. And this will just help mark off this page so I can find it in the future. 
since I don't have any like ribbon bookmarks or numbers in this notebook. So using a tab will just help me reference this a little more easily, which is always nice. Alrighty, we are moving along. So at this point, we are kind of departing from the, I guess what I would call or consider the core bullet journal spreads that are introduced in the bullet journal method and the how to start bullet journaling video. And now we're going to be getting into the more personalized collections that I like to make in oh see this is why i like pencil because i want to draw this one square lower so it's these moments that i really appreciate <laughs> using pencil for my lines but as i was saying i am now going to be setting up a bunch of collections like a lot <laughs> that i like to make just for me and they're customized to how I like to organize my journal for my life. So the first one that I'm just setting up right now is what I like to call my projects spread. So this is a spread where I like to write down any projects I wanna do during the year, anything of that kind of description. The way I like to think about projects is that they are any kind of task-based kind of thing that is requiring me to do more than one like to-do list item or task. So this can include things like one that I can think of that I do every quarter is my wardrobe inventory where I like to remember and make an effort to go through my closet and see what I have in there and make sure that everything in there is still stuff that I wear. And that is kind of a multi-step process. It involves me going through what I have, sorting things into keep and give away and sell piles. And then it also involves me reorganizing my closet if I need to, if I have a lot more of one thing, so it's not really fitting the same way as it used to. All of those tasks kind of collect into the one project being my wardrobe inventory. So that's kind of an example of what I would consider a project to be. And I like to write these down in one spread just so that it's kind of a dumping ground for things that I wanna do and then it's all here so I don't forget to do any projects that I've been meaning to get done. So the way I like to set up this spread is really easy but very effective and I essentially divide the page into six months so six months are gonna go here I have ink on my hand six months are gonna go here and I kind of create categories for each month using this thing called the Alistair list which I'll show you how to do now so on the left page the first thing I do is a dot this is to symbolize any projects that don't have a date or a month attached to them or I just don't have an idea of when I want to do it. And then I write January through June here and each month has its own column where I can put a task signifier for each project. So that's how I mark which month I want to do that thing. So I'm going to repeat that over here but instead of doing a dot I'm going to start with July, August, And then instead of doing a dot, I like to do a forward arrow. And this is a place where I can write down any projects that I wanna do in the future. So maybe they're five years in the future, maybe they're just next year in 2023. <laughs> and I obviously don't have room during these months to write all those down, but I wanna still note them down. So that is what that signifier is for. And besides that, that is the project list complete. It's really easy, but it leaves me lots of room to jot down all the things I want to do, which is why I really like it. So the next spread I'm making is my monthly and weekly refresh lists. 
And before I explain what those are, I'm first gonna mention I'm actually going in with a different color for these spreads. This is Versa Magic in Pumpkin Spice. So it's this beautiful burnt orange color. And I'm gonna be filling in the spread with a matching pen. This is the Sarasa Vintage Colorway in the color Casus Yellow. Hopefully I've cleaned my stamps enough <laughs> during this entire process so that they don't come out brown and muddy. Fingers crossed, I think we're okay. But essentially while I'm doing this stamping, let me just explain what this spread is. So previously I've been using a list in a another journal that I refer to as my trigger list. And essentially it's just a place where it kind of reminds me of what kind of categories of things I want to think about so I can remember what I have to do each week. So I have categories in there for when I'm planning my week, you know, do I have any appointments that I need to write down? Do I have any projects that I'm working on? Do I have any birthdays I want to remember? Are there any errands I need to run or things I need to go buy? All of that kind of stuff. Oops, I spelled that wrong. <laughs> See, this is why you shouldn't talk in stamp. Anyway, that's all right. Monty, Monty. <laughs> anyway, essentially, um, I decided to bring these into this journal this year because I really liked kind of having refresh F, a space to write down all the things I want to kind of jog my memory on when I'm playing the week. So that is what these spreads are going to be and I called them monthly and weekly refresh because I felt like that word kind of described what this process was in a more positive way than the word triggers and it kind of makes more sense to use the word refresh because essentially I'm using these lists to kind of help me refresh my week and month and replan for those periods. So that is why I chose the word refresh. And essentially I'm just gonna list out a bunch of the prompts for the month that I wanna think about and for the week. Just so this video isn't 10 years long, I'm not gonna do it in this planning session because I think this video will be long enough as is, but I will include a photo on the screen of the trigger list, which is the exact same, just with a different title that I've been using in another notebook. So all those kind of prompts I'll be writing down on this right hand page, my weekly refresh, and then I will be brainstorming for my monthly refresh. <laughs> So the next set of spreads are all kind of similar to each other. The categories are just a little different. And these are all kind of the things I did during the year spreads. Essentially these spreads are a place for me to write down the food, books, TV shows, movies, video games, and places that I traveled and things that I consumed during the year. So all of these are gonna be the same. I just have one page dedicated to a different type of thing, whether that's food, television, video games, etc. So I'm gonna whip through these pretty quick because they're all kind of the same spread, just being repeated with different categories. All right, so I just did the other ones off camera so you guys weren't sitting here for like 10 years looking at the same thing over and over in this uh, weird journaling loop, but I'll just look through all these kind of collection spreads to show you what I did do. 
So we have the food on the left here. This is recipes or food I ate that are like top picks during the year because I love trying new things and new recipes. So I want to record the ones that I really, really loved for future me to look back on. Books I read this year. I should have maybe done two pages for this, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> movies, I did two pages because I do watch a lot of movies. And for movies and TV shows, which you'll see later, I like to have a rule of thumb where I'll write down either new movie or TV shows I've watched, as well as notable rewatches that I feel like deserve to be on this list. So I don't write down every rewatch because that would just be a lot of the same shows repeated, but the ones that I feel like need their moment on the page, I like to write down. Then I have video games on the right because I love playing my Nintendo Switch and trying new games. And then the last one is adventures, which is places I visit as well as different hikes. So all these are the same. I'm gonna write down the date I do the thing on the left and then the name of that thing on the right. Super simple, easy little table, but I find these spreads are some of the coolest ones to look back on. And I've been really loving looking back on my 2021 lists right now during kind of the end of the year. It's been cool to see all the stuff that, I don't know, I like watched and read and did during the year. I don't know, it's kind of cool. It's the kind of stuff sometimes I forget about, but it does actually take up a good part of my life. So it's kind of cool to write down. All right, so now we are in the one of the last spreads for this setup. And this spread is going to be a one photo a month spread. Now, when it comes to pasting photos in here, I plan to use my, let me grab it, this guy here. This is the Instax Mini Link photo printer. Essentially, my plan is to have one photo a month. This is a pretty standard spread, but I think it'll be a good time, and I think it'll be really fun to look back on. So I'm just starting this spread off by stamping memories in the left-hand corner, because the way the page dimensions work, you can only fit four Pol Polaroids, <laughs> four Instax photos, per page. So because there's 12 months of the year, I can only do three pages. So I can't fit them all on two, which means that I'm gonna need four pages in total or three, I guess, but I'll have like a leftover page anyway. But for now, I'm just gonna leave this page blank and I think it'll work because there will be four Instax photos here from January until April. So I feel like it'll add a nice bit of white space to the page, I'm thinking, but we will see. All right, <laughs> I've changed my mind. As soon as I took out my Instax photo here, I, and I kind of lined it up like this, I felt like four on the page would be like a lot going on. So instead I have decided, I made the executive decision that I'm gonna do two per page like this. And then that will mean that I will use six pages, four on each page for all 12 months of the year. So I'll have January, February, March, April, and then the next page will be May, June, July, August, and then September, October, November, December. And I kind of like that because then I will have each spread represent a quarter of the year or maybe a third of the year, but four months of the year. So I feel like numerically it makes sense in my mind.
All right, and with that spread out of the way, we have now come to the end of my setup. Oh, wait. Well, actually, that's not true. I did want to, I might do this off camera just to keep this a little shorter. I'm gonna go ahead and label my journal and just say bullet journal with my Daiso label maker. But I imagine this video has gone on for a really long time anyways. So you guys will see a photo of that on Instagram, but I hope you can just use your imagination for that. And besides, it's the spreads that matter, not really the outside, right? So with that said, let's do a final flip through. So I have my cover page. I am so in love with these stamps. They are such good quality, not over it, wow. My index, which I've now filled up with my yearly spreads. That is how it will look. I do stars instead of pages, but again, if you have page numbers, just substitute that if you want. My future log, all ready to go with a nice little handy tab there to help me find it. My project space, where I write down all the projects I wanna do during the year my monthly and weekly refresh and this is how the weekly refresh looks all filled in so those are the kind of prompts that i like to write down and i'll go ahead and do the same for the month later i just have to brainstorm it and i don't want to do that on camera because again this video is probably very very long <laughs> i'm starting to sound like a broken record favorite food favorite books favorite movies watched Favorite TV shows watched, favorite video games played, places I visited and places I hiked. And then finally, a photo per month. And that goes on for the next three pages like that. And the rest of the notebook is empty and ready to be filled up. So yeah, that was my 2022 setup. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how I'm getting organized for the beginning of 2022. And let me know below what spreads you're planning on setting up for your 2022 setup. Besides that, I am gonna get going and have lunch because I am starving. <laughs> Besides that, I will see you next week for my January plan with me in this brand new journal, which I'm really excited about. And I hope that you guys are staying safe and that you're happy and healthy. And if you celebrate, happy holidays. And yeah, I guess I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, everybody.